Hey guys, Nate Rebel Liners uh, with some updates on the new body style uh, Chevy 2500 HDs. This is a 2021 2500 uh, Chevy HD and this is the first one that I've had come with the switches. Yes, the switches are always there, but they're actually hooked up. So if you've seen my previous videos on how you install the auxiliary wiring from underneath the hood and through the firewall, check out my other YouTube videos. Okay, so we know we have one through five, and this discovery that I've come up with with one through five is, is where is number five? That's been the real question, all right? Because we know number one was the uh, blue wire, I believe. Number two is uh, one of the smaller ones. It's like the, the I, I think it was the brown. Gray might have been number three, okay? Don't get these wires here mixed up with these wires. These wires here are for adding a brake controller, okay? So don't get them mixed up with those. It's these four wires here, the blue, yellow, uh, gray with a dark black tracer, and brown with a white tracer. Okay, so don't don't get those don't get those mixed up. All right, so we've got one through four. Those four wires are right here. Throw a test light on them. You could test them and find out which ones are it. But the real question was where was five, and the dealerships really couldn't give me a lot of information. Frustrating, uh, where five was. One local dealership was able to send me a schematic. The problem was I was constantly looking for a dead end wire. I ended up finding a plug located back here in the driver's side of the truck. Okay, um, all the pieces come off rather easily. They're all push pins and of course sometimes they break. So far we've been in luck. It all pops off. There was nothing that I had to unscrew other than the bungee. And there's a bungee here that attaches to this piece right here. I think it was a seven millimeter maybe. It pulled that right out. I also did drop the um, clothes hanger hooks. I think that might have been a seven or eight millimeter. They pulled straight out just so I can get the headliner down. It's just push pins in the back. I found a lot of videos guys on how to remove this fiberglass piece with the third brake light on it because you have to drop the headliner. There's eight bolts in there and that whole fiberglass piece will pop off kind of stinks if you want to upgrade your third brake light. Um, it, it, it just stinks because you got to drop the headliner to do this. But back to what we were talking about, what I found was is this plug right here that goes up top and goes to the third brake light. And you can visually see inside that it goes up top to the third brake light. Um, I don't know if there's enough light in there to see it, but if you fall to where this plug was hooked to from the factory, I disconnected this to test it, you'll see the plug goes to a rubber boot um, in back there, and that allows it to connect. I'm trying to get you some light here. Um, if you follow that plug, you'll see the rubber boot right there, and that's where that connects to as far as the third brake light. Okay. And inside the harness that goes to this third brake light, I discovered that the number five is dead end right here. So in this plug, it's dead end. And I don't have it on right now. You have to go turn it on, Tommy. Um, I'll have him turn it on and show you that uh, this is the number five. So he's got the number five lit up right now. Uh, and what we'll do is just touch it. All right, you can see the test lights working. Okay. And it's the, looking at the harness that way, it's the bottom left corner. It makes it a green with a blue tracer. So that green wire right there with the blue tracer, I'll try to get a little bit better of an image for you. That is auxiliary five. With the theory that we should be able to find a way to come through this third brake light somewhere in there to install just a quick yellow light. So stay tuned. I'm going to get this wired in and we're gonna use that third brake light, um, I shouldn't say third brake light wire, but auxiliary five that's ran back here into this plug. This plug was all attached and on this black block right here. And again, it's the green 
with blue tracer. That's your auxiliary five wire. So guys, this is the connector hooked back up. Again, it was the green with the blue tracer. And I discovered that it's not that ended here. It passes all the way through and it's heading up towards that third brake light. So at this point, we are going to pull off the fiberglass, plastic, whatever you want to call it, piece with the third brake light. And we're hoping we're gonna find that wire up there inside of it so we can wire in this nice uh, Chinese light that the guy bought. No comment there. So we are going to go after the 10 millimeter, eight, eight screws for sure, 10 millimeter, and then there's possibly four bolts and I haven't confirmed that yet. Um, to make life easier, we pulled off again, both C post pieces of plastic. This bungee thing that you'll see on here is for airbags when the plastic blows. Um, you can undo them, don't forget to do them back up. We again pulled the uh, clothes hangers and we are also going to pop down. Um, this light should pop down and give us a little bit more room for the headliner to drop. And we will see what we find underneath this HD. I'm only finding videos with 1500s and no one talks about this auxiliary five button. So we will keep trying to find out what's going on here with this auxiliary five and where is it really located? All right, I don't like when headliners kink or crank. It could be permanent. This isn't my truck, it's a customer, so it really matters. I pop the covers off with a pick. They come right off, 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter each side. We're gonna pull the B post plastic piece. It's gonna give us way more room to drop the headliner down. Along with the light disconnected, it pulls straight down. It's just two tab uh, push pins that hold it in. And again, in the rear here, Okay, the plastic piece pulls out of the center of where the seat belt goes. No tool really needed. You can do it with your hand. This whole piece pulls off with your hand, and that's that bungee that I was talking about for the airbag so it doesn't become too airborne when the airbags blow. We will continue to take this part. All right, so we pulled the two 10 millimeters on the handle, and I found behind the little ABS label, um, behind the little airbag ABS label, I should say ABS, what am I saying? Cut. All right, so we removed the two 10 millimeters in the handles for the B-post upper plastic. Uh, behind the airbag label, pops off the same way as the covers for the handle did. And it looks to be, I don't know, maybe seven millimeter. Um, on the inside, there's one more screw as you could see. And it is going to confirm this for you to make life easy. It's going to be a, what is it Tom? We pulled it out, seven. We're just going to run that out real quick. By taking that out, the plastic there, that's going to allow us to bring that right down. We're going to start getting a lot more movement here to drop this headliner down, especially with this light out now. All right, so we got both B-post plastics um, removed, and now we've got way more room, and it's not stressing that headliner, drinking it as much. You can see the movement down there. And we will now pull out the eight 10 millimeter nuts off this and see what we got. So we removed eight of those total, four per side. The easiest way to do that, okay, was by using, sorry for all the jumping around here, using a tool um, like that, okay? A small extension with a deep. I was able to get those off, all those off fairly easily. Um, I have a feeling they're not going to go on as easy as they come off. I don't see anything else other than those eight nuts that are holding this fiberglass piece on. I've looked it over quite extensively. I'm currently on the passenger side and we are now going to see if we can remove this fiberglass. I think it's fiberglass piece. All right, so we're in the back now. This thing's got a really nice work box on it. Uh, we lined it yesterday. Come on, beautiful. I'll brag about that later, I guess. But uh, here we are in this back wing that Chevy's done, and we are gonna try to get it up and off to see if we can find this wire in the back side of it. In the very corners of the truck, this is the passenger side, there's two on each side, four total, 10 millimeter bolts that hold the corners with a fiberglass plastic piece on top of the roof. 
Those also have to be pulled. We're removing those now. So those are the two culprits uh, that you'll find located the corners. Four of those, eight of those, all 10 millimeter. All right, with some brute force, <laughs> with all eight nuts and four bolts, that's where your four bolts were. And all these holes that you see here is where your nuts were. And your bolts, brute force, we get it out. I immediately look at the third brake light and I can tell you that the wire that I'm looking for is not in there. So I dare guess we are gonna find this wire somewhere in this wrapped up mess right here. So we will undo this. And I'm guessing that this wire right here is our auxiliary five because we have not touched anything with the brake. So I'm probably gonna have to go get a pair of razor blade or something, gently open the end of this, and I have a feeling we're gonna find our wire. And I did not need a razor blade. I simply unwrapped it with my camera in one hand. Setting the camera, I was able to just unwrap it. And lo and behold, I was not anticipating to find a ground also. A ground dead ended, and there's our auxiliary five with the green slash blue stripe, and there it is. So with any luck, we're gonna be able to take that light, bring the wire, capture the wire right down through here, connect it right here, and voila. Um, I'm impressed that GM did this from the factory. This here, I, so guys, you have to realize I am a Chevy guy. This here is a nightmare. I don't understand why they couldn't have put pull out tabs to be able to take this off from the outside. An awful lot of work. I mean, it's not terrible, but it's not quick. That's my only complaint so far. All right, AUX5 test. We've got our power and ground heat shrink connectors done up. Go ahead and hit AUX5. And wow, look at that. Cheaper creeper. All right, so uh, our light's on. We used some 3M adhesive square connectors here with the uh, zip ties. The light's on, not the greatest fit, but uh, it's what you get for a cheap light. And the cord, I didn't have to do nothing. I didn't notch it or nothing. It seemed to fit over it fine. It's done. We're going to put the bolts back in it. Uh, just a quick side note, if you're ever going to do any kind of prying on plastic, or I should say paint, uh, metal, fiberglass, whatever, this tool like this is really handy. It's made by Sir Tools, ST. And uh, I love those things. So we'll get these bolts and nuts back in this, get the headliner back up, put our A and B post plastics back in, and uh, ship it. So uh, I thank you guys for tuning in. I'm going to show a little bit more really quick. Uh, we're going to tell you the actual colors to make sure they're right. And also, this is what a real high quality spray in high pressure, high temperature bed liner looks like. Um, I know someone's going to ask if they want to see that. So, show it real quick. The truck's a little dirty because I've been climbing in and out of it. We did do the bumper and everything down the sides. But that's the spring bed liner. Alright, guys, and there we are with a completed job. Everything reinstalled. We got our yellow safety light on there. That liner's done. Rain guards are on at owner's request. Back and everything is uh, secured up. All the bolts are put back in. Remember, a lot of times when you're pulling these tabs, um, the metal portion of the plastic tab, it stays stuck in there. Just pull the metal portion out with a pair of needle nose, stick it back on the plastic tabs, and they will re-push in there. But uh, as you can see, uh, we have successfully found the AUX-5 location. And the third brake light ran right from the factory. Um, if you're adding the kit on, I have no idea if it's back there because you just plug the harness into it. It may be. Um, that's something I don't know. Remember, um, these four wires are your one, two, three, and four. And just to make life easy on you, auxiliary one is blue, auxiliary two is gray black, auxiliary three is the brown white, auxiliary four is the yellow, and the aux five is the one that is in the rear. 
and back with the green blue stripe. Thanks for guys, uh, for everybody for watching. Uh, again, Nate Rebel Liners. Make sure you hit subscribe in the lower corner, please. It helps me out. It's much appreciated. And if you're also into ham radio, I am a ham radio guy, and I also have Rebel Radio uh, that I do a lot of live streams on. So check out the channels, hit subscribe. It's much appreciated. And glad if we were able to help anybody out locate the Auxiliary 5 pre ran wire from GM back in the third brake light. Until we talk again, we'll talk to you guys soon.